I want to greet every one of us a good evening. And um, even though there's supposed to be Koro outside, but uh, smile to somebody beside you, smile to your wife, to your husband, and your neighbors, and say you are welcome to Couples Clinic 2021. And when mommy was uh, welcoming all the camps, uh, she did not welcome my studio camp. And uh, I want you to see there are people with me inside uh, the studio, and uh, they will provide the immediate audience. I have some uh, eight or nine couples, 10 couples sitting with me, and uh, we are going to be doing this together. So I welcome you. Welcome yourself. All right. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right. So let's bow down our heads to pray uh, this evening as we begin. Father, uh, we've looked to you so much for this hour. And uh, you have brought us here. You have brought your people far and near. You have gathered couples to yourself, those who know you, those who do not, those who know you are different levels. You have gathered all of us to feast at your feet. Father, we want to submit publicly that it is to you we have come. And you are the one that will feed every one of us. This evening, Father, send your word to our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Answer all the prayers that have gone ahead of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, we are pleading with you that no family will ever regret attending this. We've heard of families that when they started talking was when a bigger problem started. That will not be part of this. No, no, that will not be an experience. Part of this clinic in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every home will go home better than they come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. Amen. We worship and exalt your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 In the beginning, um, tonight we will just be um, bringing a, an exhortation for us to pray together as an opening message and begin the study that is be, before us as God will be bringing it. But tonight I will be wanting each one of us to focus on our home focus on our marriage, focus on how it is with us, and kind of cast our minds back. How has it been? How have we arrived where we are now? Uh, some of us are just beginning our marriages, and so our experiences are not too far. But some have begun quite some years. We have um, couples that are registered, and as we have looked at the people who registered, we have people who are just about people that have been married for 30, 40 years attending this clinic. Whatever the amount of time you have spent, you will agree with me that it's been a journey. And there is still a big journey ahead of us. And as we look at the word of God this night, you are going to be praying, particularly about your own home. Uh, all the brethren that have led us to pray, beginning from uh, my wife and the sister that led us to pray, they attested to the fact that something has already happened to the marriage institution. The marriage institution that we know now is not the, it's not the one that evil people like me met when I was a young boy. Some few decades ago, marriage was still a very very honorable, at least compared to now. I know that at that time, the people that time may be complaining that uh, things have gone bad, but they have not seen anything gone bad. Just like my wife was saying, there are countries that have legalized open-air sex. I'm not talking from my head. 
they can you can have sex anywhere you like that's what has happened to us there are countries like she said that have i remember a story that i followed for a little time a, a family a father was fighting the government for taking his child from him this child was less than if i remember i think she was maybe six or seven because she wanted to do transgender they took this child and changed i can even mention the country because it was a public issue i think it was in canada they they took the child changed the sex of the child the father was fighting against them and against the interest of the father they changed the sex of this child until as the child was growing older the girl of course he who made them at the beginning made them male and female I think she was a girl. And you know, the fact that they change your reproductive organs, they only change something physical. They have not changed the inside. The person inside was still a girl. So it's now a girl trapped inside a boy's body. So as she was growing up, she became all kinds of manners of things. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the story ended, the girl eventually committed suicide. That's what has happened to us in our days. But maybe those things are looking far-fetched, but they are coming close to us, even in Africa. Africa, where you still have a little semblance of the marriage institution, is already being battered, already being challenged every here and there. But before it will go that far, how did God intend marriage at the beginning? And we are praying that for you, you'll be able to have an understanding that the person who created marriage, he was not, it was not a, it, it, it was not by mistake. He had an intention. And there was a particular way in which he intended that marriages will work. And if we don't run marriages in that way, we will begin to run into different problems. Uh, like our sister read, let me begin from Genesis, just to uh, trace tonight. By tomorrow morning, by the grace of God, we will begin our study in earnest. But let's look at Genesis chapter 1. And this time, I am going to, uh, she, she attempted to run through Genesis chapter 1, which was a very big assignment. But let me go to Genesis chapter 1, and I will just begin my own reading from verse 26, where she eventually ended. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every harp bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a yield, a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, to fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Look at verse 31. That's where I'm going to begin our discussion. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. When God created what he created in the book of Genesis, his conclusion every day, when he created the firmament, when he created the stars, when he created the trees, his conclusion is always that it was very good. And when he created marriage, even in that same Genesis chapter 1, 
uh, as we begin to study, you will discover that marriage was already created right from chapter one, right from inception. Marriage was not an afterthought. The woman was not a secondary creation. God, who envisages at the beginning, had always had the home, the wife, the woman, the husband in mind. So right from Genesis chapter 1, what we are reading in Genesis chapter 2 is only the methodology by which God created. In terms of creation, all of creation finished within six days. Am I correct? Yes. Eh? Yes. If you read our Bible, God did not create anything again after six days. So it is not as if the, woman, the man was created within the six days and then God scratched his head and said, oh, I'm forgetting something. I need to create a woman. That's not how it happened. A woman was created right from Genesis chapter 1. Can you see it? In verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. How did he create them? Male, Male and female created he them. So the home was part of God's original creation. Is somebody listening to me? The home was not an afterthought. In the beginning, in the very beginning, when God conceptualized what he will call his earth, and when God conceived the idea of a man living on the earth and fulfilling his will right from the beginning, marriage was in the picture. In fact, as you will soon discover, as we go, I don't want to do all the teachings tonight, but I need to do this basic underlining uh, uh, explanation before we go ahead. God did not expect the art to function well without marriage. And you will notice now that marriage is beginning to go haywire. Have you seen that society is beginning to break down? Now that the marriage institution is no longer upheld, the sanctity of the husband and has been the head of the family. Once we began to tamper with that, and we have begun to tamper with the biblical role, I don't want to call it traditional role. That's what the people of the world, they say the traditional role of women as homekeepers. No, it's not tradition that gave women the role of keeping the home. Who did? It was God at the beginning. The biblical role of being the homekeeper, the one to build the members of society, the one to train and form people in the credo, and then release them to the world. As soon as we began to tamper with that picture, can you see what is beginning to happen to our society? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Marriage is the bedrock of society. As soon as the marriage institution began to degrade, society must follow suit. Because marriage is what produces the raw materials with which the society is built. And as soon as you tamper with the marriage institution, you tamper with the biblical understanding of a man being the husband and a woman being the wife with definite roles, definite responsibilities, let me tell you, it will not be well with any society who tampers with the marriage institution. The truth of the matter is that if we become civilized and we civilize ourselves out of this biblical picture, we are only civilizing ourselves out of law and order in the society. Have you seen the kind of products that have begun to fill our society now? Children coming from broken homes. You wonder when you read news and you wonder that a, a full-grown man, 30 years, 40 years, is raping a nine-month-old baby. You are wondering, how did that enter his mind? Trace the story of that guy. He's coming from a home 
that is scattered. All the people that are involved in many of the vices in our society go and trace their home. Hey, the father and the mother may be still respectable in the society. They are wearing the dress. They may even still be together. But the, the concept of the home is already what? Missing, destroyed. Women are no longer available to raise their children. They send their children abroad so that they can be free to do whatever they are doing. Of course, when those children come back, they have not grown under parental upbringing. Nobody formed their philosophies of life. Nobody formed their outlook on life for them. They, left, they were left to themselves. And what does the Bible say? A child that is left to himself will only bring his mother what? Shame. Now, the shame that is coming upon us in society today is very simple. It's because the marriage situation has broken down. So you see, the original picture of the ark functioning well it stems from a home functioning well. And if you are listening to me tonight, if you are not going to become a part of the problem, if you are not going to produce vagabonds for society, if you are not going to produce children that are going to become kidnappers and uh, money launderers in government, they are not going to become uh, doctors who will fake doctors tomorrow. Your home must be correct. Your home must do well. Let me tell you, anybody you see doing well today, and I say this under every sense of responsibility, everybody you see that is doing well and making good contribution to society today in the biblical, godly, divine perspective, check them. They either came from a good home themselves or they fell into the hand of a nearby good home that reformed their upbringing. It needs the home atmosphere to build correct members of society. And as you are sitting down beside your spouse this evening, I want you to make up your mind that the products from your own home, they will not be causing trouble after you have gone in the society. Are you following me? That's the purpose of this uh, clinic. That I will not leave vagabonds in the arts. I will not leave people that are going to trouble Nigeria or trouble Africa or trouble the whole world after I have gone. That's what we are praying and believing that God will do to us. So you see that right from Genesis chapter 1. Can you follow me back? To that Genesis chapter 1. God saw everything that he has made and behold, it was very good. What God made at the beginning was beautiful, was wonderful. Even from Genesis chapter 1 alone, if you just try to build a picture of that home, can you see a home? And I want you to look at for me. In verse 27, when they were created, they created male and female. And the first thing that God did to them was to do what? Bless. To bless them. How many of you would like to have a blessed family? To have the blessing of the Lord following you everywhere. They, they woke up in their life. Like the uh, people in my language will say, Ni jin ji won. Won ji sinu kini. Sinu ibukun. They woke up from their life. Their beginning was inside blessing. The first experience of their life was that they were blessed. They were running into blessing. They moved in blessing. And look at what God said. And God blessed them and said to them, Be what? Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. I saw that at the beginning, there was no problem of childbearing. Every family was fruitful. Have you read Genesis before? They gave birth like, I don't know how to put it. They were giving birth to children because they were given the assignment to do what? To replenish the earth. They were giving birth to children. Somebody has been asking and said, say, where did Eve get, where did Cain 
get the wife to marry. I say, when we get to heaven, be asking God. <laughs> that was not my problem. But if you look at it, we were only given a record of what is necessary and important for us. Those people, they gave birth. Can you imagine somebody is living 900 years? So at 300 years, he was still a small boy. He was a teenager at 300 years. So when we say Enoch died young, have you checked his age? 300 plus, and he died young because there's somebody who is living 900 years. Can you see that kind of thing at the beginning? What God planned? People that had no sickness in their body, they were not, in fact, they were struggling to die. Why did I say that? You know, after they sinned, God said, to dust you are, and to dust you will return. It took them 1,000 years to be able to die. It's like they were struggling to die. Their body was so, so, I don't know how to put it, so strong. There was no problem with barrenness, no problem with sickness. The blessing was in the outside, blessing was inside, their store was there. Everywhere they moved, they just ate. They didn't need to have money. Brothers and sisters, are you hearing me? Yes. Money was our own creation. We are the one who spoiled things. You just want to eat, you just came out of your house and moved into your garden. That grew by itself. That you probably didn't know how it grew. If you want to eat mango, you ate. If you want to eat this one, you want to eat a way, do you just cut it fresh and put it on fire and eat. Nobody needed to pay. Nobody was asking you for money. Nothing was nothing. Everything was free. I wanted you to see that picture. The, the picture of the first man and his wife. Blessed. So blessed that God himself was the one that was talking to them. So today you, you want to know the will of God. You have to go and pray and fast on the mountain. Did you see Abraham fast on the Nimani mountain? Hey, Adam, did he go to any mountain to, to pray and fast? How did the voice of God come to him? As he was just walking, was just hearing God. Divine leading was, was guaranteed. Healing was guaranteed. Food was guaranteed. Just mention it. All the things that are problemming you today. It was not there. At the beginning, it was beautiful. But what stopped, what spoiled things? You will now see. Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to skip chapter 2 because we are not yet ready to study. But go to chapter 3. And now, see, chapter 3 begins it with one small word that suddenly became very big in my eyes. It's like we have been talking about this story. In fact, chapter 2 stopped, you know, finished. Can, I, can we read? Eh? Look at, uh, let me just read uh, from verse 22. Are you in verse 22? Genesis chapter 2. Verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is one bad thing that God has done to me. Is that what Adam said? No. This is the war of man. Is that what Adam said? No. This is the, they said it is women that will kill every man. Is that what Adam said? What did Adam say? He said, nah, this is what? Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. This is me. This is me. When I look at her, I'm seeing a picture of me. She's the embodiment of me. She came from me. This is me now. Abba. And the natural thing. The way Adam said, how do you think he must have done? Did you think he said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh? Is that how he said it? Yeah. How do you think he did it? He must have with open arms and said, wow, and he grabbed the woman and he had a hug 
and say, wow, where have you been? I've been looking. All the animals have their own husband and wife. And me, I'm the only one walking alone. Welcome. Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. That's the picture that we see ending chapter 2. And Adam said, this is bone of my bones, verse 23, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of my. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You know, if you read that, it's as if it's a joyful thing. I must leave my father and leave my mother and do what? Cleave to my wife. You see that excitement in that chapter 2, as if marriage was an exciting thing. And sincerely speaking, when I was growing up, the marriage institution was so exciting. You went into marriage, there was a lot of arrangement, a lot of things into it. Not now. It's not my, my, my business to talk about the problem of getting married in our today now. Maybe we'll be dealing with that in the intending uh, couple summit that those who are not married will be going through from tomorrow. But today, the emphasis is on the ceremony. Am I correct? Yes. The dress they will wear, the cake they will cut, the people will sit down, the ashwabi they will do, and all, that's all. In those days, that was not the focus. It was on the couple themselves, the grooming, the talking to, the, the talking to the two families, the sitting down and making sure that this home was going to succeed. I still met a little of that. I still saw some of my elder uncles getting married. I saw the processes. Nobody has time to do that kind of process. They just build, book an event center, hire a, a preacher, Call a planner. Back, 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 back on the table, on the internet. Book for this, book for that, book for code, book for because they have money. They have just brought some few 100 million that they don't need just to plan for this wedding. Back, 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 back and they are finished. Back. Everybody comes and finish in one day. It has finished. Then they leave the poor girl in the hands of the poor boy who don't know their left from their right. And within three months, what happens to that relationship? It breaks because there was no preparation. No living in order to cleave. Nothing. It was just a ceremonial public arrangement. That's all. And unfortunately, many of the girls of today, I get to get married. I get to get married. All that is in their head is their wedding day. Just to wear dress, to wear white, to say, did I look fine? Then they have all kinds of manners of things have been put. They do bridal shower. You see them take photographs. They have put, everything is on Facebook. That's the whole, the whole marriage is on Facebook. They have not faced themselves. They are on Facebook. I was listening to a, to a young man recently and he said, we, I, I, I ended up practically not knowing the person I married. All our relationship was on social media. We got married, we didn't know ourselves. And you can know what will happen. Within three months, everything was scattered. That's not how it was. The picture I see in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, is that of excitement. And verse 25, the beautiful thing of it. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not what? Ashamed. I know that they were talking first physically here. Yeah, and that's true. They were physically naked. Yeah, manufacturers of garments have not yet come into production. They were working physically naked, and there was no shame. But beyond that, I see a couple that is open to themselves. I see a couple that is naked to themselves. What other word can I, can I use apart from no, naked and open? That is a eh? completely transparent. They hid nothing from one another and there was no problem. The families you have today, we are even being trained how to hide things successfully from your spouse. Yes, 
Just go on our social media, go on uh, everything. The training is how to make sure that you say, hmm, hmm, be careful. Some women have done this to their husband. When they talk about it, and I say, some women have done this to some men. Are they strangers? Are they not married? The truth is that many people who claim to be married today are actually not married. That beautiful picture, I wish it had remained. I wish there was no chapter 3 of Genesis chapter 1, uh, the, uh, the book of Genesis. And all of us know what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Look at the, the, the verse. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. You know the way they started with now became very significant to me. As if to say, now, now, we've been talking about this beautiful picture. Everything has been going on well. Everything is wonderful. But now, and I'm wanting to think, the world has been going on well. Society has been ordered. Everything has been going on well, but now, now, things are scattered now. And I dare say, some marriages that are listening to me today, they can think back and say, hmm, at the beginning of our marriage, everything was wonderful. Everything was sweet. Before we got married, when we used to look at ourselves from outside, I was, I was, I could almost not wait until I married this girl. Eh? I don't know whether it happened like that to you. Eh? Eh, when all those parents are saying, eh, be wait, eh? we have to go through the process. You have to go through counseling. I say, which counseling are you people doing? I have seen the person I want to marry. Allow me to marry her, John. Is that not how it is? There is that excitement at the beginning. At the beginning. At the beginning. Maybe some of you listening to me, your marriages are still young. Let me believe God that the wine is still there. You are still intoxicated with one another. I pray that that wine will last long. Say amen. 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 Uh -huh. But there are some marriages now that the, the, the home is no longer the way he used it. He said, now it's different from at the beginning. At the beginning, it was wonderful. At the beginning, it was fantastic. At the beginning, this man promised he will take care of me. In fact, when he was going to marry me, he sat with my parents and told my parents, just hand over your daughter to me. You can be sure that she will be well taken care of. I will make sure that nothing goes wrong with her. That was when? At the beginning. Eh? At the beginning. But now, let me ask, how is it now? What is happening now? Even in Genesis, everything was going well until somebody came into the picture. Who came into the picture? A serpent. Our sister called it the enemy. You remember she read for, for us from Matthew. And he said, while men slept, an enemy did what? He went and sowed tears in the garden. That's, that's always the story. I can, I'm almost 100% sure that everybody listening to me tonight, they can tell a story of how it was at the beginning. Am I correct? Yes. They can tell me how at that beginning. Hmm. I can see some wives looking at their husband and saying, hmm, I hope you, you remember. You remember how you used to do. But now, we thank God. We thank God. Now, we thank God. We thank God. At the beginning, it was sweet. At the beginning, it was wonderful. At the beginning, it was carrying you. Some of you still remember what I'm talking about. How when anytime he comes to come and visit you, Men can do many things. When that time, before you got married, when he comes to visit you, and he met you washing clothes, what did he do? 
Eh? He helped you to go and fetch water. And sat down with you, and you were talking, and you were discussing at the beginning. At the beginning. You know, the Bible says there are four things that are too wonderful. Let me show you that Bible verse. I, I, every time I read that Bible verse, I say, Kai, the Bible just knows men. It just knows, knows us very well. At the beginning. Are you with me? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 20. Actually, if we want to read and get the whole uh, context, you have to read from verse uh, uh, Proverbs 30. Did I say to 20? Yes. No, it's Proverbs 30. It's Proverbs chapter 30. Is Proverbs chapter 30, from verse 18. He said, there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. There are four things that are wonderful. Can you see those four things? He said, there are three, but there is one that is the highest of them all. Number one, the way of an eagle in the air. Have you seen an eagle navigating in the air before? Beautiful to watch. A, an eagle does not flap his wing like all other animals doing flapper, 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 flapper. No. He soars, gliding majestically. You see an eagle, you know that this is the king. The way of an eagle in the air is beautiful to watch. I, I recommend that you go and watch it. You will just adore God. Wonderful. The way of an eagle in the air the way of a serpent on a rock. Have you seen a snake on a rock before? Snakes don't have legs, but yet, if you see how they run on top of rock, you'll be surprised. I know many of you, you, don't, you never stay to watch snakes. <laughs> when you see snakes, you, you pick crazy. But at least you watch them on television now. You see how they walk. How you wonder how do they move? Eh? As if they don't have legs, but they... They have legs, though. You know that snakes have hands and legs. In fact, they have many legs and snakes along their length. That's why they move like that. It's not just their movement. They have hands and legs. It's just that it's inside. Next time they kill a snake, don't be afraid. Go near it. When they put it inside fire, you will see the hands and legs will come out. You have never seen it before. Many of you are city, city boys and girls. And... Uh, but that's what happens. The way of a snake upon a rock. The way of a sheep in the midst of the sea. Actually, you don't see the tire, and yet they steer that sheep. How does he move? Very wonderful. But then the final one, the way of a man with a maid. Wow. If a young man locates a girl he wants to marry, mm, you, you come and see strategy. What did I call it? Strategy. Strategy. You come and see movements. You come and see planning. You come and see many, many things. And they did many things in those days. At the beginning. At the beginning, they treated you. In fact, the girl told herself, say, Kai, this man must be very caring. Ah, it's just that you are, you know, as a pastor of many years, you are sat down trying to persuade a girl not to marry a boy that you can see. This boy is going to deal with this girl. And you are talking and say, hello, and this girl, you don't know. This guy is more experienced than you. Eh? Have you prayed? He said, excuse me, I prayed. He loves me. He said, how do you know? He said, he's very caring. Ah. He's very caring. Eh? Anytime I want to do something, he just chops in quickly. Anytime I want to say something, he has given. Even if it is only the last 5,000 naira in his pocket, he's willing to give me three out of the five. I say it's okay. What you don't know is that every man at the beginning, they normally serve good wine. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Do you remember in Cana of Galilee, that marriage that Jesus, eh? 
Do you remember what the governor of the feast said? Let's read it. Let's read it together. In, in, that's in John chapter 2. If you open with me, John chapter 2. And before we get to verse 10, where he made that story, you remember they, they married and the wine ran out. And then they went to Jesus. And then um, all the things that was uh, happening in that uh, story, in that marriage feast, how Jesus turned water to wine, and they didn't know anything. Let's go to verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants withdrew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man, listen, everybody say every man. Every man. That's the nature of men. Hello? I know you are married now, so you understand what I'm talking about. At the beginning, at the beginning of relationship, at the beginning of marriage, at the beginning of everything, when they are still trying to, you know, cut you, they are still trying to win your heart. Eh? They are just married. They are still wanting, they are still wanting to get something from this woman. Every woman, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have drawn well drunk, that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. I pray that that will be the story of your marriage, that the good wine will be the latter wine in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to see how this thing is consistent. At the beginning, things were wonderful. At the beginning, things were rosy. At the beginning, things were going on well. But now, when your head, you are well drunk, you are intoxicated, and you have given everything, and you know when a girl is intoxicated with marriage, oh my God, she can give anything. She can give anything. Up to the point that now, they are so intoxicated that they are giving their body before they marry. They can give anything because they are intoxicated. The wine has entered their head, and the young man knows what he's doing. He's playing them like a like like chess, like draft, is pushing you, chop this one. Chop. You push it to you, you win. You put this one, you win. No problem. No problem. I, I, after all, we're not going to marry. We are going to marry. No problem. But when your head has really gotten swollen up and you are already won over, then it begins to bring that which is worse. I see this happening even in marriages. Let me ask marriages that are listening to me, wherever you are, whether in Africa or outside the country, outside our continent, whatever culture, I know it's the same thing. When a man is trying to woo a, man, a woman, he gives a lot of concession. He does a lot of things that he will not ordinarily do when he's married. He makes promises that he will not plan to keep. Because at the beginning, every man normally feeds the girl with sweet wine until their head is intoxicated. As you are listening to me tonight, I want you to cast your mind back. Marriages that, especially marriages that have grown older, marriages that have gone 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that are listening to me, can you take your mind back to the beginning? When things were still sweet between you and your husband, can you take your mind back to the beginning? Can you take your mind back to when he was cutting you? When he was looking at you as if you are the princess, you are the best girl that ever lived, that ever existed. How is it now? Now, things have come inside. And I know many things come inside that spoil marriage. In the Genesis account, serpent, Satan came inside. I know every good thing that God does, there is somebody that is an enemy of it. Who is that person? He doesn't like you. He does not like God. Do you know why Satan hates you so much? It's because you are God's picture. You are God's, you are God's image. You are God's child. You are begotten of God. You are the only one that was created in the image of God. And Satan hates that. There is a jealousy in his heart. All these, these human beings, 
I don't know why God decided to do them like that. What is man that you are so mindful of him? What is man that you are carrying him like this? And Satan is annoyed. Satan is unhappy. He does everything to scatter human and make human experience miserable. It is his joy when he sees somebody's life scattered. Satan is happy. When Satan sees a married life that is going very well, the husband and wife, they're always talking to themselves. They're always moving together. They're wearing the same dress. They're always talking. They're happy. They're everything. Satan will say, Mwah. Mwah. I, will, I will get you. I will get you. And he's planning. Sometimes it may take him 10 years before he will get that family. Satan doesn't give up. He says, I will, I will finish that job. I will scatter that smile that they are smiling at them. Say, Until I finish it, I will not know. I remember we had just married. This would be some over 30 years ago. We had just married and I was doing a marriage seminar as I am doing today. At that time, I had already become a pastor. And we came back, we were doing a marriage seminar. As I was talking about principles of uh, correct marriage, and as we were going like this, suddenly... You know, we preachers, we, we understand that. You just begin to hear what is going on in the heart of people. I just started hearing one man say, look at him. He's talking. His mouth is doing... Che, 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 che. He has just married. His marriage is not even yet one year. And he's talking about, you can love your wife. Wait until 10 years. And come back and talk to me. If your marriage has not become like my own, I was preaching when I heard that. And you know I was much younger at that time. I was a young boy at that time. So I answered him straight on the microphone. I said, I know I'm hearing somebody saying this in his heart. I said, come back in 10 years. You will meet me and my wife. Still wearing the same dress. Still sweet, sweet entry and going out the way we are going. Thank God it's more than 10 years. It's more than 20. It's more than 30. We thank God that God has kept us. But why is that man talking like that? He has seen many homes that did not last 10 years. Who is responsible? It's Satan. I want you to be aware that there is a, an invisible enemy who doesn't like you. He doesn't like your marriage. He does not like the fact that you and your husband, you are together. Many homes don't understand this. You don't understand that you are facing an invisible enemy. That is planning for the two of you. He's setting your head against one another. Because he hates anything that God has done that is working well. Satan hates it. So he went to the woman and he said, Has God told you not to eat? And the woman said, No, God has not told. And, and, and then they started talking and said, hey, If you eat, nothing will happen to you, Jare. And I want to ask tonight, as I bring you, begin to bring you to the point of prayer. It was Satan that came into the marriage of Adam and Eve that spoiled things. Let me ask you, at what point did Satan enter your marriage? If you think tonight, you can think back and remember that everything was going on well until, until that day. I've listened to many stories, bad stories. I had a couple when I was still pastoring a local church. They just wouldn't settle. This fight will not finish. When I said to this one, another one will start. When I said to this one, another one will start. So one day, I decided to go and meet this man where the woman, the wife is. And I said, wait till now. Sit down, sir. What's the matter between you and your wife? Yeah, he said, nothing. Eh, it's just that she's, I said, no, let's leave all of that alone. Tell me what is the problem. What's the problem? Then he looked at me and said, Do you want me to? Do you do you do you really want me to talk? I said, That's why I came. I want you to talk. Tell me the problem. He said, That woman, she he said it in Yoruba. If I translate that, it will it will not make meaning. Say he has lost her head. Oti sorry no, oti sorry no. Lower me, 
lati jo tin kan bayi ti sele what does that mean she has already lost favor there's nothing she can do that will be correct again because of what she did one day ah and you know when she when he started talking i saw the change the ah i said calm down calm down calm down what what did she do then she told me the story i will not repeat the story now because i don't know she may be listening to me he may be listening to me i will not repeat the story but the the woman offended this man actually it had to do with his mother he did something to the mother that the the young man felt was too terrible and he for years have passed he will not forgive this woman and so no matter what that woman did there was always a problem madam sir let me ask you what did your husband do to you five years ago and you vowed that this house will be hot for the two of us yes the truth is the house will be hot not just for him it will be hot for you also everything was going on well until satan the serpent entered in through an event that happened let me ask you what is that event will you not let go of that event so that god can bring a fresh beginning to your marriage tonight i met with couples that it was just one outing that started the whole of this trouble of their life it was one discussion that your mother had with you in the village some time ago that's what caused the trouble between the two of you many years ago your marriage was going on well everything was going on fine until your mother called you aside and said hey 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 what is the name of that girl now kike lomo kike kike i see the way you are always smiling and laughing with your husband hey kike oh mokuri you don't know men no you don't know men see the way the two of you are going in you are going out you are doing like that are you planning for when this man will leave you alone uh -uh. you say mama don't talk like that now my husband loves me he's not going to lose uh, your father your father said more than that that time we were cutting he promised heaven and earth see what he has done to me he has married second married third wife every man after some time when your body is no longer strong the way it is now he will abandon you and look for another another girl that was the beginning of your trouble from that day you came to the house and you started suspecting every move of that man anytime you saw him talking with somebody especially if he's a and he's counseling guests ah wahala has started you say um, um why are you this counseling that you are counseling is, is already one and a half hours which which trouble are you settling that you have not that you have not settled in one and a half hours i know it is the counseling is not the problem where did the problem start from that discussion that discussion that's where it started and i'm asking you tonight i'm asking you tonight cast your mind back where with that went satan into your marriage how did satan enter your mind? it may be a discussion between you and your and your friends in the office they say all these men of nowadays you see you cannot trust any man like that though the, our parents they were more stable they were more sensible all these boys that are like this all they are looking for once they marry you and they start sleeping with you that's the end they will not take care of you again you have to plan for yourself it was a discussion in a cafeteria have you did you forget it was inside the cafeteria you sat down and this girl was packing things into your head packing things into your head that's the reason why everything went haywire between you and your husband 
I'm talking as if it is only girls that Satan has done like that to. Is it only girls? Ha. Ah, what about men? That it was in a discussion, one parallel discussion like that. All men are fears alone. And they told you, you see, there is one problem with every woman. And there is a solution to it. See, you see, that's how my own wife too was doing gang, 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 gang to me until I knew the, how to solve that problem. You say, how did you solve? My wife, is, she will not listen. And if I tell her to do she will say, hey, she is also educated. She has understanding. She knows what she's doing. Hey, she, her mouth is too bele, bele, bele for me. You say, ah, see. There's a solution. There's a way to solve a problem of solving. Every woman needs to be slapped once. <laughs> Abby? Make sure that the slap is a very dirty one. Slap her in such a way that if she's not careful, she can be using rub, ointment to rub the neck for one week. After that day, what will happen to her? She will, <laughs> she will be coming down. It was just a parallel discussion. Even though you told them, you say no, ah, me, I cannot beat my wife. Oh, I cannot beat my wife. In our church, eh, they have taught us that eh, people should not be there. But the man has already sown a seed. And that seed may take five years, ten years to germinate. The day you beat your wife, that's the day everybody shouted. Even you yourself, you were surprised. You say, hey, did I slap my wife? What did I do? And you started crying. Bro, it's not that day he started. It was the day one certain serpent spoke through a, a voice and told you that this is how to handle that woman. As I'm talking tonight, I'm not just talking stories. I'm not talking theories. I'm talking, I know that this is real life situations. And I want you to think back tonight. Excuse me, sir. Where was the matter? Where did it begin from? We have to go back there to uproot that seed that Satan, Satan inputted into your marriage several years ago. We have to go back there and resolve the matter. At the beginning, it was wonderful. The man and his wife, they were naked. They were not ashamed until Satan. If we look at your situation now, and it is different from at the beginning, you have a need to pray tonight. If you can check your relationship with your husband now, and it's different from at the beginning, there's a need to cry to heaven and say, Lord, restore us to where we started from. If that difference is not a positive difference, if that difference is not, in fact, there's a woman here, you are listening to me today, you started very well, you, in fact, you became born again, and you started learning discipleship principles, and you were growing, as you were growing, after 10 years of discipleship was when Satan came in. So, your own, you have many, many checkpoints on your story. What your life was as an unbeliever, when you became born again, things became better. And then it degenerated. Then discipleship came in and it became better until Satan came in again. Tonight, God is ready to restore you back to that beginning. If only you will cry. We have been praying for you. We've been fasting for you. We've been praying that God will restore you to that beginning. And tonight, if only you will open your heart to God and cry. And say, Lord, things were better than this at the beginning. I didn't bargain for what I am getting now. I have begged, in fact, I begged my wife, begged my wife, begged my wife to follow me to this clinic. It was only by, by some kind of divine arrangement that she's here. Both of us have separated now. Can you beg, bow down your heads and begin to pray now? And begin to talk to God and say, Lord, restore the joy of our marriage. Restore the wine as at the beginning. Restore it to how it was at the beginning. Restore it to how it was when we saw ourselves before we married. 
oh, things were wonderful. We were not ashamed. We were all thinking that everything was going to be wonderful. I didn't envisage what is happening now. Father, have mercy on me. I want you to begin to pray and begin to talk to God tonight and say, Lord, restore my marriage. Restore this marriage. At this beginning, before we start looking at the picture of marriage, the first thing you must do, Father, is to stretch forth your hand and heal my home. I want you to pray now. Don't pray about another home. Don't pray about another family. It's time to talk to God about your own home. It's time to speak to God. I would like you to rise on your feet and begin to pray now. It's time to talk to God wherever you are. Talk to God and say, Lord, restore me. Restore to us the joy of our marriage. Restore to us how it was at the beginning. Send us back to how it was. Go back and begin to pray now. Begin to talk to God. Reba sanda laba kori aba shekata raba sa. Oh, Father, do something. Wherever you are, stand up and begin to pray now. Begin to talk to God. Begin to ask God to do something definite in your home. To heal your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Reba sande keto bakari aba sanda laba kori aba shak. Rela sinke te bakonde le basange shishta. Raba sanda laba konde te seba Rende skande, tenga ruba sanda, rika samba konde lebasha. Speak to the Lord where you are as you are standing. Ask God to visit your home. Ask Him to visit your family. Ask Him to visit and change things and send it back to the way it was at the beginning. At the beginning. Father, things need to return to the way you planned it. The picture we see in Genesis. It's no longer the picture of my hope. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Rema sanda la baconde le bacadi abasanta. Rema sike to bacandasha. Raba sanda la kori abasande. Rike soma sanda. Father, I need an intervention in my hope now. I need you to touch my family. I need you to touch my home. I need you to touch my life. Can you talk to God? There was something that scattered everything somewhere along the line. Ask God to pinpoint that thing to you tonight. What is that thing that happened to you and from that day, your husband was no longer respectable in your sight again? What was it? That happened to you many years ago, and from that day, your wife could no longer have your favor again. Can you plead with God? Or put it from my heart this night. Or put it from my heart this night. Take away this, this tears in the name of Jesus. If it was human beings that will go and pluck up these tears, there will be a problem. While they are uprooting the stairs, they can uproot the seed also. But Baba is here tonight. God is here tonight. He can take away those stairs and uproot it. He can change their heart. He can return the wine as at the beginning. In fact, this new wine will be better. Cry to God and say, Lord, tonight, let, let the new wine, let it come to me. Let me have a new wine in my home. Rema sanda koria ba kande shteke sabasa. Rima sonde le ba koria ba shteke te ba samashta. Rika sanda la ba koria ba shtanga se. Lema suria ba sende. Father, please have mercy. All over the camps as people are praying. Father, walk amidst us this night. Walk from family to family. Father, go from home to home. In the name of Jesus, pluck out every seed, every seed that Satan has, has sold, everything that the serpent, everything the serpent is coiling around that is making that home unbearable. Father, have mercy upon us. Do us a miracle tonight. In the name of Jesus. 
perform this miracle across our camps, across the continents, all over in the countries, South Africa, Namibia, Canada, everywhere they are following us tonight. Everywhere people are sitting down in homes and they are holding themselves. Father, let a miracle take place tonight. In the name of Jesus. Rakatande roba sanda la bakori abasanda. Le masuri abasande. Le katoma kandele basanda. Le busonde kanta bakari abash. Thank you, Father. Rama sanda bakushta. Talk to God tonight. Take us back to the beginning. Take us back to where we started. Take us back to that time when everything was rosy. And those of you that are just married, and maybe things have not yet gone wrong, maybe the wine is still there. Can you plead with God? Father, keep Satan away from my home. Keep Satan away from this, our marriage. Lord, put your hedge around our home. Don't let Satan have a part in our home. Rando Robo Kassendele. Don't let Satan have a hand in our relationship. Go to God tonight and say, Father, put your hedge around our home. Don't let me listen to Satan anywhere. Don't let me listen to Satan anywhere. He may come as a friend. He may come as a parent. He may come as a colleague. Don't let me listen to Satan. It was because Eve listened to Satan. That's why we have a problem in humanity today. Plead with God. Don't let me listen to Satan. Don't let my husband listen to Satan. Don't let our home open the door to Satan. In the name of Jesus. Reka sanda laba kondele sonte kashta. Rika seria basonde le bakanda. Rika senda la bukande shetas. Nema koria basanda. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Tonight, before I pray for all of us generally, it is possible that you are listening to my voice now. And the matter is that even your own life is no longer in the hand of God. When you were a small child, you loved God. You wanted to serve God. There was the consciousness of God inside of you. But as you grew up now, everything has changed. You no longer want to, to, to go to church. Your husband had to drag you to listen to this message. Your wife had to drag you to listen to this message because your life is no longer in the hand of God. You are no longer walking with God the way you are. You used to be a choir boy. You used to sing in Sunday school, teach in Sunday school in those days. But now, things have changed. Things have scattered. You are no longer walking with God. Tonight, before we continue on this matter of the home, how it was at the beginning, you must go back to your beginning. You must go back to God. Tonight, you must re rededicate your life to Jesus. You must hand over your life to God wherever you are as you are listening to the sound of my voice. And you know that you need to, to rededicate your life to Jesus. You may even be born again. You are going to church, but you know that things are not the way they used to be. Now, your quiet time has scattered. Now, Small, small lines has begun to creep in. Now, at the beginning, you were a correct Christian. But now, now, things have started going gradually. Now, you are watching pornography in secret. Now, now, what has happened now that has destroyed? Before we talk about relationship with your wife, it has first of all destroyed your relationship with God. That's where to begin tonight. If you don't settle that matter tonight, you will not be able to settle the matter between you and your husband. It was something that happened that made you to say, if this man thought he can do something, ah, is it because I'm a Christian? That's why he's treating me like this. I know what I'm going to do. Now, that's your story. 
you are a Christian, but you have started doing many unimaginable things. Tonight is to return to God first. The first thing to do tonight is to return to God before you can return to your wife, before you can return to your husband. If you are there in any of the centers or in your home that you are listening to me online and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, there's no shame about it. That's where to begin. That's where the miracle begins. That's where the turnaround begins. I want you to be bold about it and raise your hand and say, I want, to, I want to make it right with God. I want things to begin afresh between me and God. I want God to note me as rededicating my life. It's only between you and God. Can you raise that hand above your head, wherever you are, in any of the centers, and you say, I want to be born again, or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus I've been a Christian, but I am no longer walking right. I attend church, but God is no longer in my heart. And I want to make it right today. I would like to pray with you. You are the first candidate for the greatest miracle tonight. Go to God by raising that hand and say, Lord, here am I. Help me. Here am I. Change my heart. Here am I. Uproot the walking of Satan in my home, in my heart. Cut it off, Lord. And God is going to perform that miracle. Is there anybody in any of the centers? Just raise that hand above your head. I'm not going to ask you to do much more than that. Just raise that hand and say, Lord, please look at me. I need to be born again. Look at me. I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. Lord, look at me. I'm the one that is in need of a miracle. The first miracle tonight is, is the restoration of a relationship between me and God in heaven. Wherever you are, even if you are in your home, you are watching online, you are watching us on Zoom or your, on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are joining us from tonight, or you are even listening to this message, long after I have preached, God is talking to you as you are listening to me now. God is talking to you. God is knocking the door of your heart. He's saying, open your heart. Let me come in. I will change things for the better. Let me in. Your life will turn around. Let me in. Things will change for the better. And I want to encourage you to submit tonight. Submit to God. Don't struggle with God. You have been struggling too much. That's why things have not gone well. Is there anybody there? Let me check around. The camp, the camp commandants, please help me check in any of our centers. If anyone is giving, surrendering his life to Jesus at this time, I would like us to pray. I'm going to be praying. Just raise that hand. I'm going to pray with you now, wherever you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray now. Let's pray. Let's pray. And all of you who are born again, can you help me to pray with these ones that are coming home tonight? Father, every family, every husband, every wife, I see them raising their hands in the different camps. Lord, some of them are in their parlor. Some of them are watching on YouTube. And they see, they, they, are, they are raising their hand to you. You see them. Father, have mercy. Let a miracle happen tonight. A turning around in their heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be the miracle of salvation. The miracle of restoration. Let it happen in their hearts. In the name of Jesus Lord, everyone who has strayed away, they've wandered away from following you, but tonight they are returning to you. Father, have mercy. Restore them unto yourself. Father, restore the joy of salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I plead with you as many as are raising their hand. Let a newness come over their lives. Let a new beginning. Let it begin afresh in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Put your hand on your, on your chest, wherever you are, on your heart. Put that hand on your heart. Raise your left hand and put your right hand on your heart as we pray tonight together. Father, I thank you very much for this word that you have brought. Thank you for these people that you have touched. First, to restore them to yourself. Father, I ask you, Cause a, a miracle 
Let it happen in their hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. All that I can do is to preach. You are the one that saves. And you went all the way to Calvary in order to redeem their soul. Father, what you did for each one of these people that are raising their hands tonight, cause it to be reenacted on their hearts, in their lives, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the power of the cross, let it come to effect in their hearts, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Where there was a hard heart, a heart of unbelief, a heart of stone, replace it with a heart of flesh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be a newness of life from this night in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Now, I want the counselors to help me locate them wherever they are as we are praying. Keep that hand raised up. Counselors, just give them the counseling uh, forms as we continue to pray. Now, every home that is here, I would like you to talk to God one more time and say, how it was in the beginning, before Satan began to creep in, Lord, do a miracle and restore us tonight. Restore us back there. As the word of God will begin to come over the next two, three days, let there be a full restoration. The wine must be sweeter. Mm. The wine that Jesus gave in that feast, the governor said it was better than the former wine. Plead with God and say, the wine of our marriage must be sweeter. The wine of our relationship must be sweeter. The wine of our togetherness must be... Must, Jesus, you must give us new wine. New wine, new wine. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let me ask my wife to come and pray for, for us as we, as we close tonight. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, tonight we are grateful unto you. Thank you, Lord, for the way you have started with us. Thank you, Lord, for showing us our, um, our beginning. Thank you for showing us that at the beginning, it normally starts well. The wine is always there at the beginning, very sweet. We saw that even in the garden of our, of our marriages at the very beginning, it was good seed that was sown. But while we slept, while we became careless, while we pursued other things, while our eyes got away from you, while we, we began to slip back small by small, then the enemy came. When we began to listen to other people, when we began to watch several films, when we began to read several books, when we began to, to, to read several things on the social media, before we knew it, our hearts began to slip and drift away from the principles that you showed us before, from the things that we, we used to walk in, the path that we used to walk in, we began to slip away from it. And as we did that, the enemy came and sowed tears into our garden. Father, you have opened our eyes tonight. We saw that it was going on well until now the serpent came in. Father, we plead with you. Everywhere where the enemy has come in, into every marriage that has listened tonight, we come against every activity of the kingdom of darkness. In every marriage and in every home, and we bring his walking to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask that, Father, you will open our eyes to be able to locate the particular place, that particular now of our own marriage, the particular now that the serpent was introduced, and you will help us to be able by our own hands pluck out this enemy from our marriages in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we ask that from tonight, you will begin a fresh walk in our hearts. Amen. You will begin a fresh walk in our homes. Amen. You will begin a fresh walk in our marriages. Amen. You will speak to us further than this. Amen. You will speak to our own particular and specific case 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will open our eyes to see our now, the serpent came. You will help us to see it. The point that the enemy came, the point that the enemy sowed the tears, the point by which we began to drift, you will open our eyes to see it. And you will help us to decide to make a U-turn and go back to that beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we are grateful unto you. Lord, thank you for tonight's meeting. Thank you for coming to us the way you have come. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will go further with us Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, we are grateful unto you. You will speak to every husband specifically. Amen. You will speak to every wife in a definite way. Amen. You will bring your word to every home and every marriage in a very definite way. Amen. In examples and illustrations. Amen. Father, we are grateful unto you. Because no home will be left untouched. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 You may be seated in all our different camps.